Today we're going to talk about some of the most basic measurements we do in the horse, observations that we do with our eyes and our hands. In order to take care of horses, you really have to understand what's normal. There's no way to recognize disease if you don't know what that horse should look like when he's having an average healthy day. There are three key variables that we routinely use to quantify the health of a horse. Those are the temperature, just like we do in humans, their pulse, again, very similar to human medicine, and their respiration rate. Let's go through each of these measures and talk about what we need to use and to observe using our hands and eyes in order to decide if our horse is having a healthy day or not. I'm going to start with respiration because it's one that's fairly simple and easy to do. When I measure respiration in a horse, there are two key regions that are easier to use. Those are their nostrils. So each time Kansas here takes a breath, you'll see that nostril move just subtly. If they're breathing normally, it should not be an excessive movement. The other place where it's fairly easy to observe is at their rib. So you can watch their chest expand ever so slightly. This should be very subtle unless they're excited and they're breathing very hard. So how many breaths should we observe in a healthy horse? Well, that depends on age and fitness. And one of the things you'll hear me say over and over again is that normal is relative for every single individual. However, for an adult horse of average body size, we tend to look for about eight to 16 breaths per minute as being normal. Fitter horses, just like fitter humans, have lower respiration rates and also lower heart rates. And younger, smaller animals tend to have higher. Now, eight breaths per minute, that is much slower than humans. So sometimes, you're, if a horse is healthy and relaxed, you'll have to sit and be patient and look for those eight breaths. Just like in human medicine, if you wanted to measure per minute, you can shorten that by measuring for 15 seconds, watching your, your timepiece for 15 seconds, and then multiplying it by four. That means you're looking for just two breaths in a very relaxed and fit animal. Now, respiration rate is something I like to start with because I often can do it by eye. I can stand back, I can look at the horse, and I can assess their overall attitude, how willing they are to interact with me so that I can help to protect my safety and the safety of the horse and those around me. And then I can begin to uh, slowly move into the other measures that are a little bit more in the horse's personal space. The next key measure is definitely one of those. That's heart rate. And for heart rate, you're going to need to put your hand on the horse. For safety reasons, I like to start at the shoulder. Now, Kansas is clearly very comfortable with me uh, being around him and keeping him company, and he's being an excellent, excellent demonstration horse. But some horses will be a little nervous, and you don't want to just jump up, pounce on them, and start touching them. Heart rate, I think, is one of the more difficult measures that we use because it requires some sensitive use of your tactile sense of touch. There are two, maybe I'll say three key areas to investigate heart rate in the horse. One of the easiest ones, because you can do it while simultaneously restraining them by their halter, is just under their jaw. You're gonna feel for a fairly large blood vessel a little bit uh, about the size of a pencil, just under the skin of their jawbone here. And remember their skin there is about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. So you need to, you need to, to use a little bit of pressure in order to feel that, that blood vessel. The second site is down here just behind their pastern. There's a group of blood vessels and nerves that uh, all follow along one path and you can very gently palpate the back of the pastern to locate that. The third is what I'll call the cheaters region. When you can't find a pulse, you get a stethoscope or you put your ear to the side of the horse's chest and you listen. But for my students in health management, I make them try to learn to feel a pulse before I let them cheat and listen with the stethoscope. Now there are two key errors that most people make when trying to feel the heart rate in the horse. The first is they tend to use too much pressure. 
Blood pressure in the horse is about the same as human blood pressure. So to make sure you have your senses calibrated, you might feel your own pulse first. If you press too hard, you're going to close that blood vessel and you won't feel it throbbing. So most people are a little too aggressive. They want to just grab on. They close off that vessel and they never uh, feel it uh, moving. Now, the, the second common challenge students have when trying to feel heart rate is that they tend to not be patient enough. So let's talk about average heart rate in the horse. For an adult horse about the size of Kansas here, that average is about 28 to 40 beats per minute. But again, that varies primarily on fitness and age. But we tend to say one of our red alert signs is a heart rate above 40 for a horse who's normally in the average zone. That tends to indicate pain or, or illness. Now, that 20 to 40 beats per minute is well below your human average, which is typically about 60 beats per minute. That means when you go to feel that pulse, you really have to slow down, be patient, and wait. Some of our very fit, very large HTU teaching horses, we have measured heart rates of about 12 on a hot day during lab. That is very, very slow and requires a lot of patience to be able to, to count and record that heart rate. Now, the last measure that we use to, to indicate health in the horse is their body temperature. Now, body temperature is the one measurement that requires a piece of specialized equipment that you may not always have on you. However, when you're managing horses, it's always a good idea to use the senses that you have regularly and observe them as often as you can to form an idea of what is normal for that horse. And then, if you begin to suspect trouble, you can go and seek whatever tool that you may need to do the temperature. So when using other ways of observing temperature in the horse, one of the best places to check is just around their ears. If you, if you gently touch their ears and feel them there where the skin is thin, if their ears are very hot, then you might say, hmm, maybe I better check their body temperature. You can also just take a finger quickly and put it just in the corner of their mouth. Their body temperature on average for a healthy horse is around 100 degrees. Pretty variable, again, based on age, fitness, and environment. Horses are fairly comfortable with changes in body temperature. We tend to freak out anything different from 98.6 and we're like, oh, I'm getting ill. But with horses, that can vary quite a bit based on the individual, their level of activity, and their environment. So when I'm feeling for a normal body temperature on him, if he feels warm, slightly warm to my touch, that's okay, because he should be a little warmer than I am. But if he feels alarmingly warm, or warmer than he is on most days when I walk by his paddock and just give him a pat, then I'm ready to bring in our additional tools. Again, the key to using these three measures, temperature, pulse, and respiration, is to do it regularly so that you have an idea of what is normal for each individual horse. Horses can be um, subtle when they're in trouble, and it's important to try to address that trouble as quickly as possible. So if you have a good concept of what's normal for each horse, you can be a proactive manager of your horse's health and try to catch problems before they arise. Okay, so I just told you that temperature is one of the th those things that requires a specialized piece of equipment. That happens to be a thermometer. Now, we're super lucky these days that we have these inexpensive rapid digital thermometers because they really decrease the amount of time you have to be in the potential kick zone of a horse. But if you only have a mercury thermometer, that's fine. Just remember to shake it down and then to uh, have a little piece of string on the end just so that you don't lose it. More often, you're going to drop it on the floor, have it break, and have a mercury spill. Uh, but the, the, the barn myth is that it can disappear into the horse. Not impossible, but more often that you break the glass. So when you're using a digital th thermometer, uh, if it's a barn thermometer, it, you always want to make sure that the batteries are fresh. You'll turn it on, wait for it to calibrate, and then it will say it's ready to read. Now, in the horse, 
The, the most accurate location we have readily available to take a temperature happens to be rectally. And horses can be a little shy about allowing you to work around this region. So make sure that you have a hand on the horse, you're at the end of their visual range, so you, they need to know where you're at, and that you touch them to let them know what's going on. Now, when we're ready to take the temperature, we can gently pull the tail aside. I like to pull it towards me. You can also potentially just lift it so you can see a little better. I'll try to lift it for the camera here. And then you're going to insert the probe of the thermometer about an inch and a half. Now, if you have lube handy, that can make life a little more comfortable. Um, if you don't, there's all sorts of things like human spit that can, can be used in a pinch. So I'm going to very gently place this into the rectum. Now, the rectum on a horse is going to be the orifice that is closest to the tail. I have to mention this only because students have been confused occasionally with the hind end anatomy of horses. So we're gonna choose the orifice closest to the tail. Our thermometer has beeped and as it turns out, Kansas right now measures 98.7 degrees. He's feeling very human, very chill. We would only be concerned if Kansas's temperature went well above 100.